The judgment states that under sections 39 and 40 of the Constitution, Ms. Robinson was not qualified to be elected as member of the House of Representatives. The judgment also notes that the September 3, 2007 election for Northeast Sinan was, quote, null and void and of no effect and the seat is declared vacant, end quote. However, speaking with TVJ News earlier today, Ms. Robinson expressed a shock at the ruling. As for why she missed the court hearing, she said she had not been served with the court papers and insisted that she had a scheduled court date of June 7, following the last case management conference at the Supreme Court. I have the understanding of the law and I have all intention of trying up in court for the trial on the 7th of June. I must point out to you that prior to this, I have attended all court meetings that I have been given. I have attended and Mr. Boyd, who brought the action against me, did not attend many of them. The documents for Ms. Robinson to vacate the seat were served on the Speaker of the House and the Clerk of the House this morning. In the motion brought against Ms. Robinson, Natalie Bowen had contended that Ms. Robinson was not qualified to be elected to the House of Representatives because she was a dual citizen. Mr. Bowen had asked the court to declare her election null and void and declare that the PNB candidate, O.S. Cena Smith, be returned as the MP for the constituency. Chief Justice Sailor McCalla had ordered full disclosure by May 7, a deadline Ms. Robinson's legal team missed. Nicole Hills McGowan, TVJ News. And the booting of Shahina Robinson from the Northeast St. Anne's seat comes after a nine year run as MP. She rose to prominence following her 2001 victory over the PNP's Carol Jackson in a March 2001 by election and later in the 2002 elections. In that election, she polled 9,900. 79 votes to Mr. Robinson, that should be Mr. Robin, Mr. Brown's 6,941. In the 2007 general election, Ms. Robinson polled 11,632 votes over the PNP's Oswest Senior Smith, who received 9,610. And the Jamaican Labour Party says it intends to fight the ruling. The party's communication spokesman, Andrew Holden, has indicated today that the GLP has not accepted the ruling and will contest it through legal means. The party is doing everything possible to ensure that legal action is taken. Um, my, the information that I've received so far is that a state of execution will be sought. The government overshot its revenue targets in April. The latest data from the finance ministry showing that the cash-strapped government got an unusual boost with more tax dollars coming into its coffers than it had projected. National Hendricks reports. Better than expected GCT inflows suggesting consumers are shopping again aided the government in exceeding its revenue target for April. The aim was to collect $21.2 billion, but actual collections were $325 million higher. The better-than-expected performance was attributed to a 17% increase in GCT collections in the month of April. Expenditures was lower, too. The data showed the government spending $148 million less than it budgeted for the month of April. The cuts were mainly on capital projects such as road works. Interest paid on the massive national debt was slightly higher than planned, though. In all, the better than expected revenue intake coupled with the lower than planned spending meant good news for the government's targets. The fiscal deficit, which measures the excess of government spending over revenues, was $473 million less than planned. But those were the figures for the first month of the financial year, which is April, before violence in May shut down commercial activity in the city for an entire week, threatening revenue targets and triggering unbudgeted spending. Dashan Hendricks, TVJ News. The contractor general frustrated by the mining ministry's failure to put the divestment of the government's 45% stake in Jamalco to a competitive bidding process has launched a special investigation into the matter. The government's stake is to be divested to a Chinese metal company through a company called Port Reliant. The contractor general over the last few weeks has been raising concerns over the structure of the proposed deal, saying it lacked transparency and had conflicts of interest while not seeming to bring value for money. 
However, the OCG's request for information to look into the deal was challenged by the Permanent Secretary of the Mining Ministry, who questioned his jurisdiction over the divestment of government assets. The Contractor General said he saw the questioning of his jurisdiction his jurisdiction as candidate, given his lawful obligation to oversee the divestment of government entities and the current administration's insistence in the past that he investigate other divestments. And still ahead tonight? Rather seeing Tivoli strongman Christopher to the court, Education Minister gives green light for schools to reopen next week in Tivoli.